So I'm going to take this piece of fabric and I have my graphing ruler and a piece of wax chalk. Uh, I'll leave some of these for you in the studio. I also have a little demo about like little tools that you might want to have along. But what's cool about this is it melts when you hit it. Um, so I'm going to make some pleats. I want to make them about a half an inch. So I'm going to make marks that are, I have my graphing ruler so I can just see right down the middle of this. And I'm going to make these at, um, at a little over one inch each. I'll go right down my fabric. And I'm only going to do a few of these, but you can go right down fabric. I'm just going to mark these and I can see with the graphing ruler so I can just go right. This is a great way to make parallel lines for whatever thing that you have to make. I could keep going all the way down. It's not this point. I can pick it up and I can like fold from this one to this one and hit it with my iron, which needs washing, which is why it's sticky. And I can pick up the next one and I can go to here. So I could decide to pleat like every other pleat. I could pleat um, a series of them just like that and what's cool if you I also did a demo about how to build a padded table like this it's called making a work table and the nice thing with that is if you decide to do that you can just pin right into your tabletop like this and hold them in place so this works well if you're doing something really big to be able to pin it in place so and this fabric holds woo, a press really well I've never melted a fabric in a demo before See, my iron's dirty. I need to clean it. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. And already right there, I have pleats. So if you have a bunch of different lines, you might, you can also do pleats where I go one in one direction and another in another direction. That's called a box pleat when two go in together. Or I could do a series of them. I could fold them even closer together so that the edge of the one then becomes the edge of what folds to the next one. And then they're knife pleats, so they're very close one after another. So you can decide how much you want to use. But you can see that even these little pleats that I did, I'm gonna add one more to make it even. So I'm just avoiding that bad spot on my iron so I don't mess up the fabric again. But what it did is it went from a piece of fabric that is, if we measure, that was Let's see, that says 40, this must be in pixels or something close. It's not in inches, <laughs> it's about 10 inches long and it goes down to about five inches. It almost cuts it in half the total width. So that might be something that sticks into a waistband and then it spreads out as it goes over your hips or it could be like in a shoulder. This is stiff enough that you could put it into a shoulder and it would actually stick out like that, which could be kind of cool. So I wanna look at some different ways of doing uh, pleats and tucks. So this is one where this is, you can see that same fabric. I had a bunch of it, so a lot of my demos are made out of that. So this is called a box pleat, where two, the pleat goes this direction and the pleat goes this direction. It's called a box pleat. This is actually a double box pleat, where there's one on top of it, and then there's another one behind. If we look in the back, this folds here, and then there's another one. It's the same thing, just measuring, folding, and pressing. And what happens is like, this is like this much fabric. I don't know how long that is. And it's brought down into this much. Let's measure it. Yeah, here's my long one. So this is, let's see, 15 plus 18. So that's like 33 inches that gets of width that gets brought down to 12. So this is about a third of a third of the width of this. So it's a way to go from something being very full to being very tight. So again, it's compressing the amount of fabric into a lesser amount. But what's cool, you start to get all these, so you get lots of folds in there. You can also, um, this is one where the fabric already had the plaid on it or had like a, a gingham or a check. And so I could just use, instead of having me having to, um, line each of those up and draw my lines like I did on the dark fabric. I was able to just take it and pick it up and fold one section onto another. So these were all folded and then pressed by hand. And what's kind of cool is now it's not a gingham anymore, it's just stripes, but when it opens up, 
you see the whole thing, which I think is really amazing. Um, and then after you get them all pleated, I can take them over to the sewing machine. And let's say I pick a line like at this far down and I would go in and stitch each of these. You can you see I top stitched just right in the folds and top stitched this far down. And that's all kind of in the back of the fold. Then when I pick them up, I stitch it back down again and you don't see it. So it's all, each one is hidden. This is kind of, I like to call this like a roofing tile type of construction where what you do to this one, the next layer you put on covers it up, then this one goes here and the next one covers it up, that one's stitched, that one covers it. So you don't see any of the construction from the outside, but it's all really well um, uh, stitched on the inside. So these are only stitched down to here. So some people, sometimes with pleats, you go in and you stitch them on the outside too if you wanna see the stitching, but it's really like, those are all aesthetic type choices. So I want to look at a few other examples of things. This one's kind of fun too, along the same lines as that stripe. Is um, this was this? It looks like when it's all closed, it's just this like looks like red fabric, but it was actually like this striped fabric before it was started. So it's kind of I like that kind of you're standing there and it's one color and then you walk and it opens up and this other thing. I'm not sure I like these colors, but the effect is very cool. And it's just very simple folding those pleats so that the colors are hidden and then if you can see on the top of this it's just top stitched down at the top to hold each pleat in place and again this just needs a waistband or you could stitch something here have kind of a yoke and you know it's got this fullness and and it goes there so everything you make you can think about where it goes could be a sleeve that could be kind of interesting too so so there's that, and then there's some other kinds of pleatings. I like this one for a couple of reasons. This is box pleats, like that first one we looked at where there's two pleats coming from two directions and then going into the middle. And uh, so this had a couple of interesting things going on. One thing about this is on the pleats, you see how this edge is all finished. So before it was pleated up, I actually folded it over towards the back and then did the pleats and then when I stitched it down it caught it so that whole top edge is already finished here I did it on both sides so and then stitched down the middle to hold it in and then you can you, you can play with that stitching like the first the saw the plaid one on here the stitching is hidden on on this one it's top stitching on this one I sort of got decorative with the stitching um, and so that's a really nice th this is like would make a great skirt. You have a skirt, this is the waistband, and the top is all finished already. And this could be whatever length going down the rest of the pleats. Or again, something coming this way to make some interesting detail. It gets pretty stiff because the fabric is stitched, so you start to get some structures that go off the side. So the other thing I did is I did, I wanted to look at how this, it, how much the fabric changes the character of something. So here's this one, it has a certain kind of elegant, and then I, I took the, I did the exact same thing except to a linen. And I think it's really interesting how completely the different personalities this have this has from this has. They are exactly the same construction. They're made the same way. The only difference is after I did the stitching on I had this stitching here and once I did that, I didn't like it, so I had to add a little bit more something in there to make it interesting. But the structure is exactly the same. They're box pleats flipped over first, top stitched down, all the way through all the layers, and then they have, um, you know, the net, they, they, uh, they, they're top stitched and then something's done with the stitching that it's used to hold it down. So I'm using sort of a decoration to actually hold it in place as well. But also, you know, it's really cool. It's different. This equally could be like a skirt or a top, or it could be something that goes across here. It could be a band that goes across this way. And this is also, these are all just plain old squares. And so as far as this rectangle and square project goes, this is totally legitimate to do something like that. Other things to get interesting is um, instead of just folding and pressing, you can go in and stitch each one. You take it to the, once you've done, you can just press each edge like this. You just press it and I take it to the sewing machine and I'll stitch it evenly like that. And then um, each one of those 
pleats, you start to do a bunch of them and you can start to get these little tucks. There's like a line on there. You see that? I can follow that so when I stitch, if I follow this, then I'll get the exact, it'll be even the whole time I stitch it. And if you can see on my machine over here, I have these old pieces of tape and they've got different various markings on it. That was from something I was sewing somewhere that I needed a line. This I needed to stitch this far in from the edge or this far in from the edge or that far in from the So sometimes I just stick a piece of tape down, put a marker. I need two inches from here and I put it out. But again, it's very nice. I was able to do nice and even. And I'll do this one the same. And as long as I use that same line every time, they'll all be even. It'll save you a lot of time of marking and stitching if you do that. And that's it. So there's that. And then one other thing. One, two, three. I'll do one more so you can see how quick it is to do. I'll have done like, you know, four, four tucks. Doesn't take very long. Okay, so, and then one more. All right. And then, you know, it all, that's all it took, and I've got four, please, you, you know, you watch me do the, all, all, that whole thing. And I can do that, I can press them all to one side, I can press these to this side, and these to this side, and that looks pretty cool. This is that same idea of little bitty tucks like this, except then they're all pressed to this side and then stitched here and then they're all pressed to that side and I'm just pushing them back and forth, sort of like on a bigger scale. It's like one of these going this way and one going that way and you start to get some movement and things. So again, it's just making, it's all based on something very simple in which way you decide to go through. You guys want to photobomb it? You come be in the demo. We might have to wait till the dogs done. So other ones, uh, let's see. Uh, so this is the same thing too. This was actually a also is a rectangle, even though it doesn't look at look like it. But when I was drawing those lines on here, like I did on this very first one, at some point I was drawing all straight lines and then I was folding it. But if I start drawing lines at angles like this, and then I go in and press these, it's actually gonna shift the shape. Let's see, let's just do this. If I were to stitch this on the machine, you'd see it even more, but I don't want to take the time during the demo to do that. But you can see just even folding, if I pinch that even kind of with, as it pinches, it starts to change that shape and change the angle just because I've moved those lines off. So that's what happened here. This is a rectangle and uh, you can actually see it's cut on the grain. This is velvet and I've just stitched them. They're closer together here and I've made these tucks. And then, uh, but because they're on an angle, they start going off. When I get over the sewing machine, I'll show you how to sew those. I'll come back to that. So I wanted to show you these two here. This is similar things, but what happens if you do it on a knit all of a sudden? And then like, what if they're not all straight, which is my favorite way of doing things. Like some are thinner, some are thicker, but it's that same thing. It was folded and pressed and then each one brought to the machine. This could be a really great skirt or top or a detail on something and a, a gather will, or a, a bunch of pleats on a knit will give a really different look. It also curves a lot easier, even though this is a square, you can get a nice curve out of it because it's knit, and because they've pinched some things further together than others. So again, it's like kind of like the opposite of your added fullness. The added fullness is one where you have a lot, uh, or you have a, 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 a shape and how you're gonna pattern make it so it has more fullness. This is the one, how do you have bigger, more fullness and then you make it constrict in because of some things you do to it. 
So these are tucks too, but instead of them all being in the same direction, they start crossing each other and going in di different directions. I think this is pretty fun. It looks great. Plus it stretches real good. It has a nice stretch. So it's a way of giving some texture and interest to something without it getting overly busy. And the back's pretty cool too. And you really could use either side like that. Other little things you can do are, let's say you're gonna pleat like so, like this thing, like the stripes, where we start with it and then there's stuff inside and it's hidden. Well, what if, you know, I put a different fabric in there instead. So that's kind of what this is. I started out with black velvet, but then I inserted these pieces, uh, some hand painted fabric in there and then basically made a tuck. That's basically what this is, is a tuck, except for my fabric inserted. And then, um, and then I twisted it to the side. So structurally, this is the same thing as this. Oops, this one. These are two. These are structurally the same thing. It's just a different scale. And I've inserted my own fabric into it. So that's pretty fun too. Uh, this isn't really tucks and pleats, but it's some fullness. Like this has like pieces here, and then this is kind of woven inside and out. This is another piece that's stuck inside of there, and then. So it starts to add that. It kind of looks like a pleat and a tuck, but it's really kind of just layering, but I, I like it. And then, let's see, just a couple more. Another one is this. Once you have the pleats, you can start doing things with it. And this, I'm gonna do another one where I talk to you about piping and binding. Uh, but what I like about, once you have something you've manipulated the fabric to like, like this or like this, you can actually, Put a different pattern piece on top and cut it out to that shape so i was able to pleat this first just like we showed and then i was like well what if i want to put a binding on there and that actually can become a nice edge just go like the edge of the skirt could come this way could come this way whatever but you can decide where they go and what scale they're going to be and then the last two things i'll look at and then i'll sit on the machine real quick is something called shearing which is like pleating so shearing can either be gathers with the sewing machine there's a way to do quick little pleating on the sewing machine. I'm going to demo that. So this is like gathered up two sides really, really tight. This is actually using a gathering foot, which you probably aren't going to have for your machine unless you have like your grandmother's. This one's hot, so be careful. If you've got like your grandmother's uh, sewing machine, she might have a, um, a gathering foot in there, which will do it automatically. But even if you don't, you can do pretty good <laughs> gathering. That's Ava. She's helping. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, um, so you can do that, and that looks that winds up doing really cool things too because it has like these two. You want to come up, like, Here we go. He's gonna help you. So, <laughs> so anyway, it's gathered on both sides. Thank you. <laughs> and this one's one when it's gathered Ish. on two sides. But then it's stitched to something flat, and it makes it pretty good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show... Oh, one other thing. This is from... <laughs> I'm, like, sticking my <laughs> This is... This is... I, in, the, in the instruction, I showed you the picture of Josie's pants that are these yellow pants with polka dots. So what she did is she did a lot of shearing. So she did a lot where she gathered these things up, and she actually took a rectangle and turned it into the, the curve, you know, the crotch curve on a pair of pants that's cut like this. But she manipulated a rectangle, so it did it. So she made a little mock-up to show us how she did it. So this piece that you're looking at right here, this piece of muslin, is actually a rectangle. But she pulled it in and pinched it in different places, and she, she took a pattern piece that she had of the pants, what it looked like, and she just kept pinching and pulling it until it made that shape. And so... Um, we can, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. And uh, it's pretty amazing engineering that she thought to do that.